praise the Lord. We want to thank the Lord for this moment, for giving us an opportunity to be able to share in the blessings of the Sabbath. And uh, I, I do appreciate uh, Brother Andrew for your prayer. We are looking at uh, Revelation chapter 18. And uh, we are looking at the loud cry and how we can finish up this work. And uh, I'm covering the sanctuary. And uh, I pray that uh, the same thing that brought us into life as Adventists shall keep us in life. Amen. That we shall not run unto anything else but what brought us into life and to 2,300 days, and then the sanctuary shall be done what? Shall be cleansed. And that should be the focal point that every mind should be centered to. If we have to understand the times that we are living in, the position we have to take, and the duties that we have to do. And so in this presentation, uh, before the sermon by Brother Anthony, I want just to do uh, 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 an introduction on the Christian walk the Christian walk, uh, the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. This is what I want to go through. Can you admit the people coming in? Yeah, this is what I want to go through. Just to do uh, uh, an introduction of it. The what? The duty of the congregation on what? On the day of atonement. This is uh, a very special study in the sanctuary because we are told if we do not understand our duty as a people at, at such a time as this, we will. it will be impossible to take uh, our position and to exercise the faith that is needed for such a time as this. When, uh, let us turn to the book of Chronicles. And I'll be telling you the second or the first Chronicles. That should be the book of first Chronicles chapter 12 verses 32. And the timekeepers, if I reach my time, you just tell me, be respectful enough to tell me I'm over the time. Sometimes we respect the timekeepers. You should respect the timekeepers. You know, brother says, oh, if I tell Sammy to stop, we shall meet outside and square out. So I'm not going to tell him, let the grace of the Lord be upon him. No, 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 do your work. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. And I insist, if you are told the time is over, please, you have to stop at the slide that you are on. First Chronicles 12, 32. And of the what? The children of, the, of Isaac, which were men that had what? Understanding of the times to know what? Israel ought to do, the heads of them were how many? 200 and all their brethren were at there. It is a dangerous thing not to understand what you ought, not to understand the times and what you ought to do because there is somebody somewhere looking unto you to, for you to be at their command. If we as a people don't understand the times and what we ought to do, Many souls are lost because God has quarried us out of the world and put us in position to draw men who are in darkness into his marvelous light. And so the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement, this is the Christian walk. And um, we had different apartments of the sanctuary, which were to guide the people what time they were living in and what they were supposed to do, uh, these are the basic things that uh, we find um, 
in the sanctuary. If you approve the people come view, then approve. Admit all. Admit all, admit all. Now we should uh, hire a new team there. Minimize. Just close the, the window. Yeah. Can you Andrew click on this slide? So that you may activate my pointer. Just click there. Amen. We are in school. This is a Sabbath school. And so, Review and Herald, February 21, 1899, paragraph 5. The Old Testament is the ground where the seeds of practical godliness were done what? Yeah. We have this Ebo team. The Old Testament is the ground where the seeds of practical goldness were first done what? This was repeated in Christ towards his disciples. We have yet to learn that the whole Jewish economy is compacted what? Prophecy of the, the gospel. It shows the past, the present, and the what? And the future. And in order for us to understand the past, the present, the future, then we ought to be able to unveil or to be able to learn this compacted prophecy, which is found in the Jewish economy, which is none, none other than the sanctuary. And so the sanctuary in heaven, the sanctuary in heaven is the very center of Christ's work in behalf of men. It concerns every living soul upon the world. It opens to view the plan of redemption, bringing us down to the very close of time and revealing the triumphant issue of the context between righteousness and what and sin so when the plan of salvation started rolling in genesis 3 15 then the wheels of heaven the clock of time started rolling and it will bring us down to the time where actually the controversy will end it is of the utmost important that all should thoroughly investigate the subjects and be able to give the hope that is in them that everyone seated here without having any other teacher should take the Bible, learned or unlearned, and be able to be guided by the Holy Spirit to give the hope they have and the certainty of the future that they are hoping for. Let us go to the book of First Peter 3.15. The duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. Do you think that your duty today hangs on a pastor telling you that this is what you ought to do? No. Let us go to the book of First Peter. Let us go to chapter 3. And uh, I'll start in verse 15. Are we there? Amen. First Peter 3.15 says, but do what? Sanctify the Lord God in where your hearts and be ready sometime always to do what? To give an answer to who? Few men, every, every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and what? And uh, we have heard people say, you know, I'll just go and uh, tell the brother that uh, we are at the end of the time. But if he asks so many questions, I'll just tell him, come to the church, we'll know truth. What if next Sabbath we shall not be in church? Everyone needs to sanctify the Lord God in their what? And be able to give what? A reason. On the day of atonement, you have traveled all the way from the camp, the courtyard, and the holy place, and you are in the most holy place, and you are still saying, let me call the pastor to explain to you these things. Where should you be? In the camp. That is where we found out the priest teaching the people how to keep the law. Not in the most holy place. The most holy place, it had who? The high priest. And his work was to make sure that the sins are blotted out of the sanctuary. 
and you had to wait by faith for him to come out to bless you because your sins had been forgiven. You didn't have to wait for him to come and go and teach the people in the camp. We together. The preacher is quarreling. So sanctify the Lord in your heart. Verse 16, look how it should be done. Having what? A good what? Conscience that whereas they speak what? Evil of you as evil doers, they may be done what? A shame that falsely accuse or accuse your good conversation in what? In Christ. So we need to understand this layout and know our duties in the day that we are living in. Can you click? Thank you. So, this was the whole pattern of make me a sanctuary that uh, I may dwell among you according to the plan. But then she says in uh, Acts of Apostles 560.3, we, we shall read the quotes and then in the later period we shall come back to our Bibles and see what the Bible says because we have been told that every doctrine that we hold, we must prove it from where? Sister White says that there will be a people on the face of the earth in the end time who shall maintain the Bible and the Bible. And she says that she doesn't give a fathom, a fathom of what you believe if you can defend it without quoting Sister White. Mm -hmm. She says, never quote her until you have a vantage ground of knowing what the scripture says. Now you'll tell this preacher, go to the Bible, then come back. But I already introduced the Bible unless you are not there. So welcome, she says, those who will gain the blessing of what? Sanctification must first learn the meaning of what? Self-sacrifice. And this is the issue Brother Jordan was dealing with in the morning, that if there are, are people who have learned to be in gratitude, are the people who are called reformers. You know, when we were still there in the fallen churches, they are fallen churches. We don't have to be ashamed to say they are fallen, and we are becoming fallen too. I was sharing with the brother, you know, he told me his story and uh, I was just ashamed that somebody can be ministering to people who are calling themselves reformers and walk six months without a house and food. And in those churches, the fallen pastors come into your house and they tell you that I don't have something to eat. You don't have money. You go borrow money for the pastor who is teaching you error. While a brother who is teaching truth can walk six months with a family living on the corridor, and then the child dies of pneumonia and you come contributing for a coffin. Shame on us. We came into the movement and what we developed is ingratitude of the preachers. You say, oh, Brother Jordan has not gone into theology. He is just like me. Why should I give him my money to do some work? But the first type was given by God himself, who is all wiser than us. And we should learn our duty in this. In fact, we are told that our responsibilities and our duties are more than what it was then. And the children of Israel nearly gave all that they had for the work of God. How is it with the people who are living in the end time in this generation? Shall they not lay everything on the altar? And then she says that a bull is presented before me. And there is the altar of sacrifice, ready to go or ready to die. And we should assume the same attitude. We have to understand the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. That actually the lives of the people are at stake. And the least thing you can do is to hold something in your house while there's a soul perishing somewhere because a preacher doesn't have fare to board a vehicle to go there. Praise the Lord. Yes, we have to come to an understanding of these things. And so we are told sanctification is not the work of a moment, an hour, a day, but a lifetime. It is not gained by a happy flight of feeling, but it's the result of constantly dying to sin and constantly living for Christ. When you look at the 144 in Revelation chapter 14, it says that they followed the Lamb whatsoever he goeth. And we should be living everywhere, constantly living for Christ in this day of atonement. Live alone the other days, in the days of the camp, in the days of the courtyard, in the, in the days of the holy place, where actually the people could go on their own uh, uh, issues, go to the farms and do certain things. 
on the day of atonement, they were gathered around the sanctuary. They didn't want to be found in any place where Christ was not in the day of atonement. And we should understand that and cultivate that attitude. Not to see the marked contrast between Christ and ourselves is not to know ourselves. He who does not abhor himself cannot understand the meaning of what? Redemption. If today you cannot understand that you need the Savior every hour, then we don't understand the, 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 the redemption. To be redeemed means to what? To cease from sin. This is the burden of the day of atonement. This was not the burden on the, uh, on the, on the, on the day in the courtyard or in the holy place. This was not the burden, by the way. Do we understand that? Because the sinner will come with the lamb, but go outside the door, is it? Go outside and they come and mingle with the people the way they wanted. On the day of atonement, there was no going outside the sanctuary and mingling with the people. There was no time for coming into the sanctuary on the day of atonement and going out. In fact, we are told in early writings that uh, the people followed Christ and when they reached at the veil that separated the holy place and the most holy place, Christ told them, wait me here. I'm going to the Father to receive the kingdom, and then I'll come and receive you to myself. He never told them, go outside the sanctuary. On the day of atonement, there is no going outside the sanctuary. It is remaining there by faith. And this is what you have to understand. To be redeemed means to do what? To cease to sin. This was the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement because their sins were being blotted out. There was no coming in of sin. It was the blotting out of sin. And when you go in early writing, page 254, paragraph 1, she says that when the angel of Revelation, chapter 18, comes, that atonement is called the final atonement, and it is an atonement for the people who died uh, breaking the law of God ignorantly, and those living on the face of the earth who have not come to the knowledge of the present truth. That atonement is theirs. But for the people who have lived with the knowledge of the truth, and then lived against the truth they have, that atonement does not belong to them. And so we are here waiting for the loud cry and the latter rain, and still just living as if that we had never known the truth for the time. The final atonement is not for us. She says, the seal of the living God will be placed upon those only who do what? Bear a likeness to Christ in our character. And how do we come to bear the likeness of Christ in character? The book of 2 Corinthians. Book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3. If we have to understand the day of atonement, if we have to overcome sin, then we'll have to uh, understand the day of atonement, what it entails, and the duty of the congregation. Look at uh, the book of 2 Corinthians 3.18. How do we come to the point of having the likeness of Christ in character? 2 Corinthians 3, we are told, verse 17, are we there? Amen. 3.17, if you reach there, you say amen. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is liberty. Liberty from what? From sin. You cannot claim you have liberty while you are fallen. You can only claim liberty while you are standing. For the great day of the Lord has come, and we shall be able to do what? To stand that person who has been redeemed. Verse 18. How do we come to that likeness? But we do what? All with open face beholding whom? In our glass, the glory of the what? The Lord are changed into the from glory to glory even as by the now those who have read early writing from page 14 to page 54 they'll understand what paul is speaking here that um, the prophetess saw a people just between the holy place and the most holy place separated by the veil and they were praying father Give us the spirit. Father, give us the spirit. And what happened? The glory came from the Father to Christ and to the people who are really praying there. And so by beholding Christ, we are changing from what? 
from glory to glory, and we are told that that glory was the Spirit of God. You understand that on the day of atonement, the Shekinah glory came to the temple, and the one who was ministering in the heavenly sanctuary was covered with that glory. So if we have to be covered with that glory, we have to be where the lamp is. As the Shekinah glory covered the high priest who was Aaron, so it covers Jesus Christ himself, and that glory shines forth to the people who are where the lamp is. By beholding him, by being where he is, we are changed. But there are other people who are also boarded there. And Satan was there pretending to be another high priest. The thing is, he was pretending to be a high priest, not in the holy place, but not in the most holy place, but where? In the holy place. And you know, Satan is a good high priest in the holy place. He will tell you that those things that are in the most holy place, don't bother about them. Just have the word, have the light, and then don't change the diet. Don't do this and don't do this. He can play on your mind very well and think that he is a high priest when he is a false high priest. True reformation. And listen to this. In the holy place, we had the lampstand having the seven what? Branches, is it? Having the seven branches. But there is another peculiar thing that was on the candlestick. And those branches, it was only the flowers, but it didn't have the fruit. The fruit were on the garment of the high priest in the most holy place. On the hem, there was the fruit of pomegranate pomon on the hem of the high priest. You had to go to the most holy place to pick the fruit. In the holy place, it was only flowers. And people are satisfied with having a flower reservation that does not have a fruit because they don't want to enter into the most holy place. Very dangerous because Satan has lodged his seat in the holy place and pretending to be a high priest. He says, just believe. There's a lot of saying just believe and nothing else. God looks at the heart. But this God who is looking at the heart, look at Ephesians chapter 2, what he says. Ephesians chapter 2. I pray that we may understand our duties in such a times that we are living in so that we may be able to take our position to understand the position of the priest and exercise the high priest and exercise the faith that is needed for such a time as this. There are two things in entering into the most holy place. Understanding the work of the high priest and being able to exercise our faith. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. This God who looks at the heart. What else does he say in Ephesians chapter 2? And we start from verse 8. For by what? Grace are ye done what? Through what? And that not. It is what? Not of what? So no works are needed. Lest man. Any man should do what? But do we stop in verse 9? What, what does verse 10 say? For we are his, created in Christ Jesus, unto what? So does verse 9, part B, cancel verse 9, part A, not of works. Does the Bible contradict itself? It doesn't contradict itself. So how do we balance not by works and then created for good works? Faith produces works. It is God who worketh in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Not your works, but the works of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5.22, we are told that the fruit of what? The Spirit, not the flowers of the Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. How comfortable will you be to plant a mango tree in your compound and each year it is telling you the flowers of the tree? Why cumber it the ground? Is the question. And so, those who receive the seal of the living God and are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus. How? Fully. The seal of God will never be placed upon the forehead of an impure or what? It will never be placed upon the forehead of the what? 
ambitious, well-loving man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of men or women of false word, tongues or deceitful hearts. All who receive the seal must be without spot before God. And so, then somebody asks you, can you be perfect as God? Can you be as perfect as God? Let us confirm in Matthew 5.48 if you can be as perfect as God. And then the theologians have come up with some uh, levels of perfection. Oh, this is this perfection that they are talking about. This is the perfection. No, Christ did not die for us to give us imperfect perfection. The book of Matthew chapter 5, if you are there in verse 48, let me hear amen. Can we read? Be therefore, even us. So what do we do with the verse? Our work is to surrender. We are told, told in steps to Christ. And then he will do the rest. We are told, let us go in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Then we shall see something in First John, the book of Philippians. We are looking at the duty of the congregation, the Christian walk, the duty of congregation in the day of atonement. The book of Philippians, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. The book of Philippians chapter 1. Verse 6 says, being what? Being what? Being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will until the day of who? Of Jesus Christ and 1 John 2, 6. The letters of John chapter 2, verse 6. What does it say? He that says he abideth ought to do what? Even as he did what? How perfect did Jesus Christ walk? How perfect did Jesus Christ walk? He was without what? Sin. Let us go to the book of First Peter. I want us to look to, to, to look at the things that we are reading and see if they resonate with us in the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. I want us to read some, some few things here. In first Peter chapter two. Let us start from verse one. Are we there? Amen. We are for laying aside what? And guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil what? As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tested that the Lord is her, to whom coming is as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built upon wood, unholy priesthood to offer acceptable to who? To God by Jesus Christ. Now let us speak. Let us uh, reason together. Because the Bible says, come, let us reason together. The priests who ministered in the heavenly sanctuary, in which state did they enter into the sanctuary? A sinful state? Were they practicing non-sins? Were they practicing non-sins? What if they entered into the sanctuary to offer sacrifices while they are practicing non-sin? Do we have an example? The sons of who? They went there to offer strange fire. What happened to them? They died in the presence of the Lord. And that is why the church is dead spiritually. We think that we are alive when we are dead. We are only waiting for burial. The problem is the people to enter into the sanctuary to take our bodies to go bury them, they are not there because they are also afraid if they go there, they'll be struck dead. We have some theory that the priests tied a, a, a rope on those who went there so that uh, if they died there, they may be. There's nothing like that in the Bible. 
we should not accept things which are not in the Bible. I have heard preachers talk about this. That is in the Talmud, in the Jewish oral lessons. And why did they do that? You can find that there's a record of doing that because even their sanctuary, we are told that the presence of God was not there. So they were just ministering to somebody they know, but not God. The real sanctuary, the Levites could go to pick somebody who had died there, but not without an offering. So if we are saying, look at First Peter chapter 2, the same book, verse 9. Brothers and sisters, this issue of saying we cannot overcome sin, we shall overcome sin when Christ is revealed in the clouds of the air. It is a doctrine of the devil to make people sleep. This theology that you are seeing around that you cannot overcome sin, it is not found in this Bible. And we need men to stand up and tell the people, either you accept Christ's righteousness or you leave it. It is as simple as that. That Christ, it will, it will, me, it will be of no uh, 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 reason for Christ to be in the most holy place for two thousand years to wait us to continue sinning and come to save us in sin. He could have not gone in the most holy place. He could have just come and took us. If He's going to save us when He reaches in the clouds of the air, if we are not going to overcome sin. But look at First Peter 2, 9, it says, but you are what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into marvelous light. And we are told in First John 1 that God is light and in him there is no what? Darkness. So if we are in Christ, what do we reproduce? Nothing else but light. Now, it is interesting. When you read the book, the, the, the gospel of John chapter 1, we are told, in him was light, and the light was the life of men. What life is that? Life original and borrowed and derived. And we can only possess this in Christ. That light is the life. And he came to give unto us, and no one can possess that life while they are still in darkness. They have to accept the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so, Christ able to do what? To cleanse from sin. How many minutes do I have? 20. Thank you. Now, brethren, you want to get hold of the pillars of your... Here is Christ in the great antitypical day of atonement, and you must do what? Understand that you need a special preparation for the what? For the day of atonement. Now, have you ever heard something called special forces in a country when it comes to military? How many have ever heard such a thing, special forces of the military? What, what is the special work? What is the, the work of the special military? Guard the to guard the president. Another thing? To? It's doing what? To achieve the impossible. The issue is this this special force they do the work that the ordinary people cannot, the ordinary policemen cannot do. Do you think if people start, you have been in Kenya and you have seen riots, do they bring the normal police? What do they bring you? There is a, a unit called FFU. Do you know what it means? How many are Kenyans? FFU means what? Fanya Fujo? When they come to the village, Brother Anthony, they clear even the hand. Nothing remains alive because no nothing wants to live in the village. So let everything be cleared and they go their way. We are a special force to the Lord. There is nothing that should be remaining in us that is sinful because we are the last jury in the court to give a witness of what Christ is doing in the heavenly sanctuary. But we, we act as if we were just an ordinary policeman negotiating with the people to stop uh, really uh, 
priority. You know, in Kenya, we have good policemen. If you riot, they come and dialogue with you. That is not the work of the special unit. And in this day of atonement, we have nothing to converse with the devil. We are a special unit to stand before the Lord. Do not go away in what? In what? But believe that Christ is able to do what? From some of the sins of unrighteousness. All sins of what? Steps to Christ says that you believe and he will supply the fact. Just as he told the lepers, stand up, take your bed and go. That is why he, what he tells you, your sins are forgiven. Go sin no more. The same power that told the leprous person to stand up, take his bed and go is the same power that tells you, my child, you are forgiven. You are clean. Go and sin no more. This is not a judicial statement, by the way. This is a true statement. Christ does not work like the courts of the earth where actually a lawyer comes in and gives a thousands and thousands and the, the court by being bribed says, you go, you are free. And then it doesn't give you the power not to break the law you broke and then you got free. Christ is ministering in the court above where he says you are free, he means you are free. Not just by the statement, by the power also. And so we are told, we must cease to do what? Because sin is the what? Put away sin and then cling to the mighty one who is able to do what? Wash away every stain of what? Now, this is a work of humility at what time? At this time. And we are told that never was a generation that was called to a such a momentous time as this. Never. Because what they are going to go through, never has it been seen the world began. We are told that we are going to live in the time that the devil will uh, double his efforts. If the devil doubles his effort, what should we be doing? We would, should also do what? Double our efforts. Now, this is our work of humility at this time, and we must confess our sins and get nearer to God so he, that he can write what? Pardon against our names. Repentance includes sorrow for sin and doing what? We shall not renounce sin unless we see it is what? Until we turn away from it in heart, there will be no real change in the world. And in the little book I'm believing, we are told about Enoch, who actually when he went into the cities to preach the, uh, the, the, the out of the city messages, when he reached there, he was sick. At the time he was coming back, the man was almost fainting. And the Lord saw that if I leave this man on the face of the earth, that he will die of heart failure and he took him to heaven, that his whole body cringed against sin. Just by beholding sin like this without participating in it, his whole body recoiled against it. But yet we have not reached at that point where we have to stand more than what Enoch stood at his time. What is what? What is our condition in this fearful and solemn time? Alas, what pride is prevailing in the church? What hypocrisy, what deception, what love of grace, frivolity and amusement, what desire for the supremacy? All these sins have clouded the mind so that eternal things have not been done. What? Shall we not search the scriptures that we may know where we are in the world? Shall we not become what? intelligent in regard to the work that is being accomplished for us at this and the position that we as sinners should occupy while this work of atonement is going forward. If we have any regard for our soul's salvation, we must make what? We must seek the Lord with true penitence. We must with deep contrition of soul confess our sins that they may be done what? Blotted out. A Christian walk, the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. Let's see what we have also. Will any less be required of us in this antitypical day of atonement when Christ is in the sanctuary above his pleading in behalf of his people and the final irrevocable decision is to be pronounced upon every case? Think about the case of the five foolish virgins. A very sad story to read in Matthew chapter 25. Very, very, very sad. That they heard the word 
the lamb, but they didn't have what? The oil. It can be that we are having a theoretical knowledge of the truth without the spirit that accompanies it. And when the cry is heard, behold, the bridegroom cometh, and we rise and we think that we can overcome the obstacles of the devil at that time, we find that we do not have the Holy Spirit to give us the power to be able to do what is needed. And so it is just not enough to have the Bible and say, I believe this and I believe that. You must have a relationship with the person who gave the Bible. And therein is the power to overcome every sin. And if we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ now, we will never have a relationship with him then. So, we are told, those who will share the benefits of the Savior's mediation should do what? Permit nothing to interfere with their to perfect holiness in the fear of what? The precious hours instead of being given to what? To display or to gain seeking should be devoted to an honest prayerful study of the word. The subject of what? Brothers and sisters, do we now start understanding how the sanctuary is so important? There is nothing that should preoccupy our time than studying this sanctuary message. If you are a married person, if you are married, you have the duty of studying the sanctuary and explaining to your husband and being able to share with your wife, uh, being able to explain to your wife and being able to share with your husband and your children what time we are living in and what is their duty. But we are so busy looking for money, is it? At the expense of what? Of salvation. Young men, I say that if you don't understand the sanctuary, don't marry. Why? Because you will not have something to explain to your wife at such a time as this. Or what is this thing all about marriage? Having some comfort. Do you know that marriage is one institution of evangelism? Do we know that? So if you can even evangelize to your wife, why should you marry? You will prevent somebody from evangelizing to her. Is it? Does this thing resonate with us? Or we are storytelling? We have to be serious, more than serious. And so... The precious hours, instead of being devoted in these things, they should be devoted in the subject of studying. The subject of the sanctuary and the word should be clearly understood by all need a knowledge of themselves, of the position and the work of their. Otherwise, it will be what? For them to exercise the faith which is essential at this time or to occupy the position which God designed them to fill. Every individual has a soul to do, to save or each has a case pending at the bow of God. And uh, sometimes we, we, we think that when we read this quote, every individual has a soul to save or to lose. It says uh, somebody else. It means you yourself. God has not created you to be lost. God has created you to be done one. Saved. And so every individual has a soul to save or to lose and so you should not give a, a, an excuse because of my child because of my husband this is why i'm not doing this and this no you have a soul to be saved and you have to work on it you yourself work on your soul no one is going to work on it if you wait somebody will work on your soul young men and young women no one is going to tell you this and that you yourself ask yourself what i'm involved in is it to the glory of god and how is it affecting my life and those who are looking upon me and so we are told how important then that every mind, in fact, I come here, each has a case. If you want to understand every individual has a soul to save or to lose, you look at the next sentence. It says each has a case pending at the bar of God. No one will stand for you.
to say that this brother did this for because of this and this. No. In fact, let me backtrack. Jeremiah 13, 20. That, that, that statement I made that you have not to marry. Look, look at it in Jeremiah 13, 20. I don't command you to accept what I'm saying. I'm requesting you to contemplate on what I'm saying. Uh, Jeremiah 13, 20, as we bring this to an end, lift up what? And behold them that, where is what? The flock that was given thee, thy what? So if you can't take care of the beautiful flock, why have it? Is there a reason you should have it? No, don't, don't add troubles to some people's lives. Just leave them where they are so that they may seek their Lord. And so every individual has a soul to save or to lose. Each has a case pending at the bow of God. Each must meet what? The great judge face. How important then that every mind contemplates often the solemn scene when the judgment shall sit and the book shall be opened. When with Daniel, every individual must stand in his lot at the end of the days. And we have to understand Daniel standing at his lot in the days of the end. There is a one way we understand it. That is unlocking the prophecies of Daniel chapter 8, which was sealed until chapter 11. But that's not the whole issue. Standing with Daniel at the end of the days, you have to go back to Daniel chapter 1 and then Daniel chapter 9. How Daniel, amidst the corruption that was in the world, he was able to be counted. That is the beloved of God. And now I have come to show thee what shall happen. When God looks at us, does he see a Daniel? You sing the song, there be a Daniel, is it? And what does it mean? The person whose prayers was answered, immediately he started praying. And so the last slide, and then we just pray. We can finish up these things. And so, shall we not cite the scriptures that we may know where we are in the world history? That is time. Shall we not become intelligent in regard to the work that is being accomplished for us at this time? and the position that we as sinners should occupy while the, this work of atonement is going forward. All need a knowledge for what? Themselves. So we need to understand our position, the time, and we are in the day of atonement in the most holy place, and the work is the work of the high priest, and the congregation need to awake. Let us read the last verse in Second Corinthians chapter 5. Let us end here in Second Corinthians chapter 5. I pray that the Lord will bless us and do something so new in our lives that uh, we shall not be taken astray by the wiles of the evil one. Second Corinthians 5. And uh, our verse is from verse 17. The position of the high priest, the time, the position of the high priest and the work. Therefore, from verse 17, are we there, amen? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? All things are done what? Behold all things, and all things are of who? Who has done what? Reconciled us to himself by who? And has given us the ministry of reconciliation to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of what? Reconciliation, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be done what? In the great day of atonement, we had the high priests in the most holy place. But then we had what we call the priests, which were in the courtyard at Portico, praying for the high priest and praying for the people and doing a sacred work. And we have to understand that we are those priests because we are told now we are ambassadors. Who is an ambassador? A representative of another country in a foreign country, is it? Unless the people in this day of atonement understand that they are not the citizens of this world, but they are citizens of heaven. 
seated with Christ in high places, they will never be able to occupy their position at such a time as this. And so may the Lord help us and may he supply the need that we have. We are told, come boldly before the throne in time of need that you may obtain mass. We can go into the most holy place and part the find that strength that we are missing. May the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much because it is too costly for you for anyone of us to be lost. And that is why the tiring of Christ has been there so that everyone may come to the knowledge of truth and give their lives unto thy son that they may find a place in thy holy habitation. Our question is asked, who shall dwell in thy holy tabernacle, Lord? It is only those who have turned away from their sin by the power of the indwelling Christ. And so tonight and this time, I pray that, Lord, you may do that which is not possible in human effort, but that which is only possible in divine effort, so that you may give us that power to become omnipotent to the sins that really every time beset us. Bless your people. And Lord, let this message not be a message of discouragement, but a message that will even quicken our uh, being and that we may be able to draw closer to thee as you have outstretched your hand to receive us. And so thank you for this hour and thank you for this Sabbath. In Christ Jesus' name, we give you glory. Amen.